Bruce Slack has been watching footage of this controversial try, illegal or not? My view would be that, you know, potentially it was illegal. It did break that law as written in the game, but you could probably argue a case either way, but, you know, as I say, it probably was illegal. Well, it had to happen, didn't it? A South African... The real grey area in, in rugby is the breakdown, attack and D, and having a really good knowledge of, of that is, is pretty key, and a good knowledge of how to have an influence. You're not breaking the laws or anything, it's just the interpretation of what angles are acceptable. If you play by the laws, you'll amount to nothing. To be a great number seven. To get away with so much and, you know, my response is he just seems to know where the line in the sand is. He'll study the referees that he, he's going to have and he'll know what he may or may not be able to get away with. And the other half, particularly for an Australian, goes, how is that cheating bastard getting away with that when we're not? You know, and he's got this angelic face and this big smile and all that sort of stuff and speaks to them very respectfully and you think, you smarmy bastard. Just before the game, I'll write down exactly the things I need to know out in the field. Um, writing down the same things most weeks. The first thing I put was, was start again and get involved early. The next point I have is uh, work rate. So a big part of my game is uh, having a crack at their ball. You know, so whether it's your feet or your hands in there, you, you get in there and you try and uh, slow it up best you can, legally. And the other one's always thinking about get up and go and change gear. So that's sort of how I'm going to play and then I always have one calm, clear and decisive. So it's obviously as a captain you want to see be calm, be clear about what we're doing and be really decisive so don't sort of be wishy-washy yes. and presence. So rather than head down you're up and you're big. So it's a, a physical but also a mental presence, you know, like where your eyes are, um, how you talk to the ref, how you engage with your mates, that has a real mental presence. And then the last couple is just play and enjoy. And that's where I write down GAB at the end too. I had this training diary and I was quite proud of the fact that I'd been picked for a trial. I was talking to my uncle about it and showing him and he goes, well, do you want to be an All Black? Oh well, yeah, of course I do. Not thinking it was anything more than a bit of a dream. You want to be an All Black? Write down a plan, mate. Yes, well, write down how you would get there. So I started putting down, well, he made New Zealand under-19s in 99. Under-21s? 2001, looking at New Zealand New Zealand Colts. And then you might get into the Canterbury A team in 2002. It's 2003, Crusaders. And then after the 2003 World Cup, be some guys moving on from the All Blacks. There's going to be gaps in the roster. He goes, well, if you're going to have this line after the All Black, you don't just want to be an All Black, you want to be a great All Black. And I was like, what? I was a bit embarrassed about uh, even writing that. I just wrote GAB at the bottom. <laughs> He's always been pretty good at rugby. Off to the target boys high and once again he was a wee bit small. He always wanted to take after me play number eight. Um, <laughs> you need to be school to play there. The boys play seven. But he wasn't good enough to get in the first 15 there as a as a number eight, a bit small, so he got to play seven and that's the position that we, we can see him playing in now and he's doing a pretty good job of it I think, you know, not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> the 1998 National First 15 Rugby Championships and look out for Richard McCoy. There was a game between Rotorua Boys and Otago Boys High School my role at that time was academy manager. So I thought I'd go out and have a look at the game and see if there's any uh, talent there that we should possibly talk to and maybe get to come to Canterbury. Four. Stay there, Ben. Stay there. Right. Right. 
Good charge again by McCourt. Didn't take too long to realise there was an exceptional talent in Rico. I think it hit the, the face of this player here, McCourt. But what I saw that day was a young player who was totally courageous. Uh, he was into everything. It's a try. McCaw goes over. Well, that's a number seven. Richard McCaw had a very good game tonight. I remember going back in and saying, look, I don't care how much it costs. There's a guy out there we need to, um, we need to get here. When I left school, I got the rugby scholarship, and some of the advice I got was, why are you wasting your time doing that? Maybe you're better off focusing on getting a good degree. And I sort of got the impression people thought I was wasting uh, talent or whatever, uh, chasing sport. When he first arrived, he was not the most talented athlete by any stretch of the imagination, but what he did have was a massive desire to improve. Yeah, I guess we had he was getting all these turnovers and I could see all the, the older guys, especially the Fords, were getting really annoyed with this this guy who was not a very big guy and he was new to the team and he was just being a real menace at training. At one stage I can remember Todd Reuben Thorne and, and Scotty Robinson saying, look, you've got to do something about this guy, otherwise we're going to belt him. And uh, I said, well, if you belt him, I'll belt you. And then I went over to Richie and I said, for goodness sake, son, just let them win a couple of balls at the breakdown, would you? Look at that desperate scrap for the ball there. They've ripped away. Who's that? Nice, McCaw. Richard McCaw. He's a brilliant young player. Blair McCaw goes on his own try. And another name in the spotlight, Richie McCaw. And McCaw's going to get another. I must have played about eight or nine games and played pretty well. Like, I knew I was... New kid on the block. Richard McCaw didn't arrive on the national scene. He exploded onto it with a hat trick of tries and Canterbury's demolition. I got Richie McCaw. His name has really been bandied about down these parts. And this young man has a big future in rugby. Well, the baby face of Richard McCaw. Someone we'll see a bit of, perhaps. I just got the pass and yeah. uh, got across the line. You're very modest. <laughs> oh. I was aware that there was talk that maybe, uh, you know, you're in the all-black frame, but... Never really wanted to believe it. Mum and Dad picked me up and we went round to some of their friends' place and we sat and listened on the radio to the All Blacks being announced. <laughs> and as soon as I got named, their friends had a bottle of champagne, they popped the cork on. I thought, like, gee, that's pretty presumptuous. Side features only two first time All Blacks, including open side flanker Richard McCaw. I was playing alongside guys that a couple of years earlier I was watching at school on TV. They were the heroes, those guys are probably would have gone up to to get an autograph. To get out in that field, especially in a test match, is uh, going to be something quite unreal and, you know, a, a dream come true, really. It's all very well being named as an All Black, but you never called yourself one until uh, you got on the field. is absolutely electric here. And Andrew Martin gets us going. I remember the whistle went to kick off and I knew I could relax now. At least I've been on the field as an all black. Whatever happens now, it doesn't matter. And here is the new cap, McCaw. Runs into the two back row forwards, McCaw and Robertson. The all blacks surge back into the game with five second half tries. Over the loudspeaker, they said the man of the match was me. Man of the match, the 20 year old. Oh, did I hear that right? 
Man, who did that? I was like, okay. It felt like I was on a fast track. You look back now, and yeah, it was really quick. Do you still look back and sort of wonderment at the fact that you started with the Colts and at the end of the season you're an All Black? Yeah, well, it's beyond the sort of wildest dreams back in, uh, even even in June, July, you know, I, well, I was trying to trying to get myself into the NPC team and try and get some game time there and to be on an All Black tour at the end of the year is, uh, was way beyond what I ever expected. It was 2002 and I'd made the All Blacks by this point and we were leaving the farm and I was cleaning up my bedroom. I found the bit of paper and uh, pulled it out and on the bit of paper it had all these uh, milestones to become an All Black and that was meant to be in 2004 I think it was. Whereas in 2001 I was already an All Black having ticked most of it off. I was like wow. So well, the only thing left on there is to become a great All Black. I guess in the back of my mind I had these ideas of what a great All Black should be. And I wrote GAB, Great All Black, but that was only the desire, that's the motivation to train and actually getting there or being called one of those, it'd be nice, but it's not the be or end all, it's what you do and where you aim. How's that, one, two, three, four, five? All good. Five, four. won 13 of the 19 titles since 1996. We are talking about a very special rugby team, folks. But as the Wallabies know, to be the best, you have to beat the best. So that's the challenge in 2015 for Australia. The, great, so the All Blacks are out there lapping it up. The great thing about Richie McCoy, he's got so many more experienced players next to him. Seeing the Wallabies jumping around after the game, I, like I stood out there just to take the medicine because I knew it'll fire me up for this week. And that's the right thing to do, you know. You respect the opposition; they won, and that's what sports about. But all it was doing was sharpening the axe for this week. Oh, I've been pretty dirty all week, to be honest, uh, about the result. I hate losing. I really hate it, and I hate it even more losing to the Wallabies. <laughs> like Saturday night after the game, I was like in bed just thinking about the things I should have done better, or why didn't I do this, or whatever. I think the longer you've been around and the, the few losses you have, you remember them a lot. And, you know, 140-something games, and that was my 15th loss. Like, uh, it doesn't happen very often. I became captain in 2006. Felt we had a great team in terms of the personnel, and We'd been winning right up to that point. 
So I thought, well, this is my chance, my moment as a player and for this team to, to deal with all the things that had, in the last World Cups would be pretty disappointing. I thought this is going to be the, the moment. Le rugby est depuis toujours divisé en deux camps. Il y a les All Blacks et il y a les autres. The All Blacks are proving a big draw card in France. The All Black front row is widely regarded as the best in world rugby. Cette équipe est née pour gagner. Qui pourra résister à cette marée noire emmenée par le talentueux capitaine Richie McCaw et le meilleur joueur du monde la saison dernière. The opportunity also to end 20 years of anger. La Nouvelle-Zélande se présente en grand favori. Many are saying the only thing that will beat the All Blacks is the All Blacks. 20 years without a draw. Carter gets this second period underway. France, 40 minutes away from elimination in their own World Cup. New Zealand, 40 minutes away from booking their semi-final place against England. 30 minutes to go, we're ahead in the game. And then they got one chance to strike. High stepping over the 22, needs support. Yannick Jones! Well, that's one that'll be debated at home in New Zealand by everybody. Bang, a hit on the scoreboard. Wow, this is not really happening the way it should. Well, you can sense the change in atmosphere. It's hard attack city. Well, some may say it's an omen. Finish the day looking forward to a semi between England and France. Who would have ever believed it? The start of this World Cup. Not many in New Zealand. Not many in the world. You know, I got down to the last two or three minutes, I was like, Jeepers, what do you do? Do you say we need a drop goal? We hadn't really talked about how to do a drop goal. It's not got the legs. It has not got the legs. Well, there'll be some broken hearts here. And a few guys started just looking at each other. This isn't the way it's meant to be. That's when I started to worry. It's all or nothing rugby now for New Zealand. And time has run out. It was just disbelief, you know, how has this happened? You know, what's happened? Well, Richie McCaw, you come straight off the pitch. That must be a terrible blow for you. What's your immediate reaction? Oh, mate, I'm not sure. Uh, it was a hell of a test match. Um, yeah, I've lost words, really. Uh, yeah, mate, oh, just one of those days that uh, you want to forget. Well, I can remember the feeling in the changing room very vividly. And I've been in a couple. Nobody was talking. It was complete silence. And some players were sitting facing the back of the cubicle, didn't want to have eye contact with anybody else. The press conference was probably 30, 40 minutes after the final whistle. You're looking at 20 television cameras and probably 200 media. Everybody agreed they were the right strategies in the group. And they worked extremely hard on those strategies and they've been successful in this match record over a long period of time. It was a horrible place to be. It was get us out of here as soon as we can. I've got to say, I thought we were ready, the boys were ready to play today. And... <laughs> Put it out there. And, and I remember in it, 
it looks really bad, but there's the the one shot that went everywhere is when I went like, like that. And I hit all the clicks and I thought, bugger, I've just given them something that I wish I hadn't. Today it is devastation, tomorrow bitterness, maybe even anger. Now this was, we were told, the best prepared All Blacks team ever, but unfortunately for them, they've scored the worst ever finish in All Black World Cup history. There is little sympathy or understanding. The three Cantabrians were in charge of the All Blacks and they stuffed it up completely. Careers hinge on World Cup results. Has anyone fallen on the sword yet? No, Ginny May, which is quite surprising. Richie McCaw, he's the All Black captain and he's got a front. You just can't perform that poorly without some ramifications. Success is a lousy teacher. And, and so 2007 was, you know, a watershed moment for his leadership. And it exposed the weakness that um, sometimes performance alone wasn't enough to lead your men. And that became a huge burden. And, you know, he held that accountability because it was very personal for him. We had lessons from 99 and 2003 that we ignored in terms of, you know, what was it that caused them to trip up when they had a team that was good enough. That repeated in 2007. That's the bit that hurt the most, I think. 